going to be a very interesting conversation that I've been waiting to have for some time now. I had a chance to speak with um, Sydney offline, and um, I noticed that there was so much that I didn't know personally about the, the, the just being trans and, and what the transgender community is really like and going through and what that lifestyle is about. So just taking into consideration how much I didn't know and so much going on in the world, I, I, I figured that this is a conversation that many of you probably, uh, maybe you inquiring about, but you just don't have anybody you can ask or anybody you can really dive deep into and get a better understanding because most people suffer from um, ignorance in the truest sense of the word, meaning they really just don't know. So please welcome uh, celebrity trans person, um, reality TV show star, Miss Sydney Star. Sydney, what's up, girl? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Sydney, I never tried to say that. How you doing? And <laughs> you almost made me say it back to you. <laughs> That's usually what you got to do when somebody says it, you got to say it back. But <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great today. I'm alive. I'm healthy. That's all that matters. That's right. That's right. Being alive and being healthy, you can't ask for, for no more than that. Mm -hmm. So, OK, um, everybody knows you, especially within the hip hop community, the reality TV community. Um, they know Sydney Star the persona. I want to get to know Sydney Star the person. Um, mm -hmm. And I really want to understand this trans world because uh, we see so much going on. And I'm, I'm being totally honest with you. Many times we, uh, people who are not living in that world, we step on these landmines, uh, not saying the correct pronouns, not addressing or, or, or using words that within the trans community are considered offensive. So I'm hoping you can just clear some things up and shed some light on um, just the, that community itself. And, you know, me and you were talking offline and you just educated me on something I had no idea. You said the word tranny is considered offensive, correct? Yeah, it's um, it's a word in the community that they, you know, try to say that is equivalent of saying the N word. And I actually, in my opinion, I actually don't agree with that because if um, if tranny was, you know, that offensive, then I probably would say that because I know what's offensive. What's offensive to me is when a person tries to say he or him to me. That's very offensive to me, in my opinion. Tranny, I, I don't think that's too offensive to me, in my opinion. But if someone wants to try to downplay me and say, oh, that's you're still a him, you're still a he, then that's when we have a problem because there is nothing on me that looks like him. So I need you to respect what you see, no matter what, maybe between my legs, but you're going to respect what my auto appearance is. You see, you see breasts. Um, I don't think. Um, him or he is walking around with a double with a, a double D, unless they, <laughs> unless they just you know really big and weight. But I mean, you know what I mean. I, I'm looking exactly how I'm supposed to be respected as, and that is a she, her, woman, girl. I've worked hard enough to get to this level, so I, that's that's really what I think is very that's one thing that you need to know when you're talking to any trans person please respect their pronouns because that can go to a whole nother situation i know people that will fight over that like, literally fight over using you, the wrong pronoun if you call them vice versa even if it's like a trans man you got to make sure you call that trans man a he and a him if you call him a she it could go down, vice versa. <laughs> wow. Okay, um, I want to dig deeper into that, but I want to first go into your personal backstory. Where, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, Chirac. So, like, anybody that knows me knows I'm from the rack. 
And a lot of people think that I live in Atlanta. A lot of people think I live in New York. Um, because I have lived in them places too, as well. So, um, but I am originally from Chicago. Um, so I feel like if I can make it in Chicago this long, then I am a bad bitch because <laughs> Chicago ain't nothing to play with. I done been through the ups and downs of being in Chicago, the almost life and death situations, all that shit. So it wasn't easy transitioning growing up in Chicago and especially on the South side, because that's where I was from, the South side. And that's like kind of not really the most, you know, easiest place to live around because everyone is like and calls it the hood. But, you know, um, I made it through. I'm at where I'm at right now. I mean, I kind of started off with my transition with being very shy about telling my, you know, truth to people because I really didn't want to be judged. I did Mm -hmm. not like to tell people that I was trans. It took me a long time to be able to accept myself and tell people I'm Sydney and I'm I happen to be transgender. So I can honestly say there was a mm, a window in my years of life that you couldn't tell me that I was a transgender. I would have took it to the grave at that time. So, um, yeah. And I'm actually happy that I'm out of that because that kind of got me into a little bit of trouble um, at times. And um, I'd rather not deal with that anymore. I want everyone to know what's going on. I don't need nobody saying that I tricked them just because it's not my fault that I look like a bad bitch and you're attracted to me, you know? So it's like, I can't help it. Like I made myself to, to getting how I'm supposed to look. I did the things that I needed to do, my hormone therapy, my surgeries, you know, to look the way I'm supposed to look. And, you know, I just kind of feel like it really isn't, it what at the time in my life, I felt like it wasn't my obligation to have to tell you or anyone else that, you know, I transitioned to being who I was. But now I do. I don't give a damn. I walk around and say, it's Sydney Star, the transgender diva, bitch. If you don't <laughs> like it, get the fuck out of my face. Like, you know. But yeah, um, I so, um, go ahead. I'm I sorry. Came a long way. No, I'm just you know I came a long way in in my transition and accepting myself. You know, for being no, I'm so I'm happy here. you made it to this place, Sydney. Um, because it, it, that's something that I think many people take for granted. Most people walk around and they're comfortable in who they are, and mm-hmm. and it really is a a, a daunting thought to think that people are walking around and, and, and they're not living their truth and they're in pain. They're scared yeah. to say who they really are on the inside, afraid to, like, if I go out, should I be able to tell somebody I'm trans? Should I not? Should I be able to tell somebody a gay? Should I not? Who, you know, I, I, I sympathize with you. Trust me when I tell you. I, I got to ask you this. Did, did you come from a two-parent household? Two parent household. Yeah. Um. So mm, not really, because my mom and my dad they divorced when I was about maybe six years old. Was your dad in your life? Yes, he was in my life. He was in my life, but they divorced and and when I was very young. So as in the household, it was just my mom and me and my brother. So okay. We but he my dad was definitely still around. Um, he was in the he was in the household for for a few of my early years when they were together, and then as after like say six seven, you know it was just me my mom dealing with everything, and I was seeing my dad like on weekends and stuff. So, but um, I think that with my mom being by herself dealing with my situation, it was a lot harder for her being by herself dealing with it. Because my dad didn't really have to, you know, he didn't really have to deal with the steps that I was going through. Um, I just was able to tell him when I was at the point when I was, I started my transition at like 15. 
So um, when I got about 17, 18, I kind of got let my dad know what was going on. And he kind of took it easy. He was like, he took it easier than my mom. So yeah, that's like, where I wanted to go with this is, is how, how was it for your parents? Because be it as, you know, people can say what they want to say, but, and, and we can all, we're human. We can all try to be as accepting as we, uh, uh, you know, would like to be, especially when it comes to our children. But when you have a child, whether you want to admit it or not, whether you think you're accepting or not, you kind of have this idea of who you think this child is going to grow up to be. If it's a, mm-hmm. if it's a little boy, you think that one day he's going to grow up and, you know, he's going to play all of these different sports and, you know, he'll possibly go on to do great things in the NBA or, or Major League Baseball, what have you. If it's a little girl, you can see her. She's going to be so beautiful and I'm going to be braiding her hair and this, that and the third. But somebody who is like yourself and, and, and you're not feeling like I'm born in the right body. As a parent, that's got to be hard. Did, did your parents accept it? Did, did, did your parents, did, for them, were they... Yeah, we love you, but we can't accept who you really are. Yeah, so I'm gonna go there and try to make it as short as I can. So yeah, my mom, I wrote a letter to her, and uh, how old? She, how old were you? I was like 14 when I wrote the letter. Okay. So I basically I wrote the letter first of telling her that I what I was sexually attracted to. So basically, okay. that letter was me coming out the closet saying that I like boys. But the whole transition thing happened like right after that, probably like a year later. So she wasn't really, she she cried a little bit when I told her in that letter. Because when I came down, she had tears coming from her eyes. She's like, you're only 14 years old. You don't know what's going, you know? She, we used the number, what? A phase. She thought it was just, she's like, this is just going to be a phase. You're only 14. So, okay, whatever you think, I already know how I felt. I said, this ain't going nowhere unless somebody do some voodoo magic on me and just say, you like girls, boom. But no, that wasn't happening. Um, I uh, can say she took it the hardest. So then when I started getting into my transition, I started growing my hair out. You know, I was very feminine looking already, which I was thankful for. But I just, you know, would get haircuts and people would be a little like, and I used to wear color contacts. So people would say like, kind of, they couldn't tell. They would say, what are you? Like, because people would be mm-hmm. like, you look like a lesbian or like, a, a, you know, a dyke. Like people used to really think that I was like a girl trying to be a boy. It was weird. So it was like, that told me right there that I knew in my heart that I'm a woman. I'm a girl. I need to make start making things happen where I can look the way people are addressing. Stay, stay there for one second. How old were you when you knew? I know at 14, you wrote this letter to your mother. How old were you when you knew something is different about me? I, I, I see all of the, the little boys, they're running, they're playing sports, they're looking at girls. I see all the little girls, they are doing whatever they do and they're looking at boys. I, I, I know in my heart I'm different and this is not a phase for me. I knew that around probably like, I would say probably as early as probably six years old, six, seven years old, very young. Cause even before I started liking guys, I just was a feminine person. Like I always wanted to play with the dolls, never really wanted to play sports like that, but I did because I knew that was what people wanted me to do. So I knew I would say, I would say I would give myself third grade, fourth grade that I knew it was something different with me because even when my mom used to kind of like leave out, I would go play in her wigs and put it on my head or put a shirt on my head and make it look like his hair. Like I knew it was very, very something very different about me. And I knew 
at a young, young age. And I never really talked about it that young, but yeah, you can learn. You A person I think can know even younger than that. So, um, so you're not you're not equating this um, in terms of sex. You're you're equating this in terms of I, I just knew I was a girl. Like things. I just knew Excuse I was a I just knew I was a girl even then. I just knew I was very feminine, and I always wanted to be a girl even at that age because I used to you know see the little Disney shows and movies like The Little Mermaid, and I used to be like, oh my god, I want to be long hair and that's why every time you see me i have inches long hair because this is something as a young child that i always dreamed to have and i always wanted to have that and it shows now in my life you'll never catch me wearing anything longer or shorter i you will never catch me with a bob or short hair, because it's just something that I've always been immune to wanting to have. And everybody, you should do short hair. You should do a, a Halle Berry cut. No, I'm not. And I know it may look cute. It might look nice, but I'm still in my phase of long, pretty hair, nice breasts, nice lips, pretty lashes, makeup. Like that was something I dreamed of being even as a child. So it's like now that I'm actually able to fulfill that look now, it's like my dream came true and I'm going to keep doing it the way I want to do it because it makes me feel comfortable. Got you. Um, Before I move this on, I got to ask you, you said you have a brother. Mm -hmm. How did he accept it? He was he's an older. He's my older brother. Um, he He didn't take it that good. He did not take it that good at first. No. We were like night and day. We were like night and day. Like it was bad. When I tell you it was bad, it was bad. We used to fight. Oh, MG. But we are like great relationship right now. We are at a great place. I love the fact that I'm able to be like that with him. We have some ups and downs. Now, my brother, you know, he that light skin. He he's a real, real light skin. He's he like Mariah Carey like skin. So he was he was a little full of himself, you know, <laughs> anything that wasn't that wasn't right. Like it was just a bad thing. Like, um, so I think I'm so happy that we're over that hump <laughs> because we hated each other. <laughs> but I could I could imagine I grew up with with a lot of brothers in my household, and I can mm-hmm. only imagine how how it must oh, have been. Oh yeah. Or, and for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and him, he was eight a, years older than me as well. So wow. Um, and him seeing his little, you know, brother, sister, like the way I was, it was bad for him. I I I could only imagine how he really felt because now that I'm at an older place in my life, you know, mature, I kind of try to maybe put myself in his shoes, like maybe he, he was embarrassed, you know. You never know. It was just something. And I was always the little sister that wanted to be around everybody. Like when he would have his friends come around, I would always oh. try to I would always try to indulge myself in his friends. And I would just be like, you know, yeah, I can be here too. Like, you know, but yeah, he definitely, he, I would say, was the last to come around probably. He was the last to come around and to be able to finally accept that. He calls me his sister now. He respects my pronouns. Amazing. My whole family does, which I can honestly say I am blessed because not all trans people have that support. And it's it's bad because when they don't, they go out to the streets and they look for that support from somebody they barely even know. When this That's right. first coming from your household, family, your mom, your dad. And when I hear it, sometimes people telling me that I got kicked out the house by their parents, I feel bad for them because it's like, that's who you should be able to be able to have that one, at least safe house, that safe haven where you can go and be like, you know, the world is against me right now, but I got my mom, I got my dad, I got my family, my brother, 
they love me and then I'm good. But some people, they, they need the world for that confirmation. They need the outside world to give them that love that they should get in family. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to go. You said you wrote your mother at 14 years old. Let her know. Um, it was that like a two page you, letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and a year later, you start transitioning. W walk us mm -hmm. through what what does what does transitioning? You know, I, I have no idea what that looks like. W w walk us through. Well, what the transitioning as the 15 year old boy, it's basically you're changing clothing, you're changing, you're growing your hair, you're wearing makeup, you're wearing earrings. And that was the one thing my mom hated. She hated the earrings. She hated the eyeliner. She hated, this was my famous, you see this right here? You yep. see that wing, that black wing? Yeah. I used to do that black wing when I was, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. Cause that was the first thing that I thought in my mind that would make my eyes look feminine. When mm -hmm. I tell you my mom used to hate it. She would tell me to wipe that off my, she was like, do not come in my house with that. She would tell me to wipe that off my eyes every chance she got. So what I would do is when I would leave to go for school, I would walk out. I would put, apply the eyeliner, you know, on the side of a house with a mirror, go to school, woo, woo, woo. When I would come home, wipe that shit right off before I got in the house because I didn't want to hear her mouth. <laughs> and I used to hate that because I used to want to be able to be free around my mom too. But it was like, at that time, I was only able to kind of be in my own skin when I was in school because the, the kids I went to school with, they were like, they found it intriguing. They would egg me on. They'd be like, girl, look at you, girl. Go on here. I'll be like the little show. I'll be the show literally because because I was literally the only person that was like different. And people would be like, especially the girls. I had a few guy friends that were super cool too. Like, and we like 15, 16 years old. You don't really get that too often, but with the guys, but they'd be like, yo, you know, do your thing. Do they used to call me spice? This was my nickname in high school. They used to call me Spice Girl or Spice Boy, whatever, because I was a big Spice Girls fanatic. So I used to be like, just call me Spice Girl, call me Baby Spice. And I dubbed, they dubbed that name to me. And that's what everybody used to be like. They'll just either say Spice. They're going to be like, they go Spice. Or they'll be like Spice Girl. The girls would be like Baby Spice. So that was my favorite member. So I will always walk around with a, my um my book note. It have a picture of the Spice Girls on it, and everybody be like, "Why do you like them so much?" And what people didn't understand is, I loved their look, their femininity, how they were, the short skirts. You know, I used to want to be a Spice Girl. That's really what it was. So I got that nickname from my classmates, and then a lot of people used to think that I like the Spice Girls because I wanted to date one of them. And I kind of would want them to think that at first, but it mm -hmm. wasn't that at all. It was like, I guess at first it was a cover up for me when I, before the transition, because I started liking the Spice Girls like when they first came out and I wasn't even in high school yet, but then I got into high school. They got bigger and bigger. They were a huge group for a few years. And then, you know, but I can say the Spice Girls, they were in a big part of my transition um, because I used to always look at them and be like, oh, my God, I want my hair in pigtails. I want the long weaves. And um, and then I became a cheerleader in high school. And that was when I really broke out. Everybody was like, well, there she go. And then the boys, I used to think the boys, the boys, I believed, had a thing for me. I really believed it because when I would have practice, Chili practice, we would walk past like the football players, and the football players would be looking at me and they'd be like, There go your girlfriend, there go your girlfriend right there, talking about me. And I'd be so like, Y'all know y'all like this. 
Y'all know y'all don't like it. When I was like 99 pounds, real skinny, real petite. But I was still cute. I was turning into like a really cute girl. Like all my friends would tell me, you really look like a girl. Your transition is going to be great when you get older. Like a lot of my friends would tell me that. And it did. Because a lot of my friends that went to high school with me, they hit me up. They'd be like, girl, you have turned into such a bad bitch. They'll tell me that. You have really transitioned in such a pretty woman. Because when I was in high school, I had a lot of flaws still. I had bad acne. I was, you know, you know, going through my teenage Everybody phase. does. Yeah. Everybody um, does. But I was taking hormones. I started taking hormones. That, at, that's where that's where I wanted to go with this. Mm-hmm. At what age did you start taking the hormones? And what does that process even look like? I took my first hormone shot, I would say, like at 16, going into 17 years old. But I got Okay, it stop, stop there for a second. Is this mm-hmm. something that you need consent from your parents? Yes, you were supposed to have the consent. I got it from under the black market, basically. I at got 16 from- years old, you found... I, had, I found an older, I found an older trans woman who was who was selling it to me. She was selling okay. it to me, and she was like, "Oh, girl, she's like you're." She was telling me, "She's like you are a beauty. I'm gonna make sure you have your hormones. Start your hormone therapy." So I would pay her twenty five dollars for each hormone shot. How often was you taking them? I was going every week or every other week, and I okay. So to, mm-hmm. I, I want to go through this slowly, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Every week or every other week, you're paying her twenty five dollars. She's giving a hormone shot. Yeah, she's giving me. It was a shot that I was taking in the buttock, and one, you know, the buttock cheek, and um, it was a, it was something that I was. Every time I would do it, I would feel very womanly. <laughs> I don't know. It was like okay, a, okay. So that that's what I'm asking. Like, what are the effects? Oh, you start you know, to get the soft skin. Soft skin. I noticed. You know, I believe since I started hormones so young, I I used to have the Adam's apple, but I don't even, I think it shrinks it because I don't even have that anymore. Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, you know, when I was younger, the guys would be like, check the neck, check the neck. And I used to have a look because I was very slim. So it used to kind of stick out a little bit. But once I started at least being on a year, of hormones, I noticed that it was kind of shrinking, and I'm like, "Oh, this must be the hormone was working." And what, what about I, your voice? What about your oh, voice? Does yeah, it and I, was, I think it changes the voice change and make his voice softer. Um, and I developed weight. I started gaining weight too, so it it, it made me develop appetites. I know um, sometimes I was, you know, having little emotion swings and stuff. Like I was you know, feeling like sad at certain things. And then the, the my girl that I was getting the hormones from, her name was Nancy. And I got it from another person too, named Tracy. And she said, they, they told me that was the effects. You're going to get emotional. You're going to have some emotional ups and down moments. And you're going to start having more of an appetite. And people know, and then my breasts, before I got implants, my real breasts were growing. Okay. I, I, I was going to ask you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're taking the hormone shots, they actually... They develop breasts. Wow. I had no idea. So if you started taking hormones and was taking it for about a good year, you uh-huh. would have breasts with big nipples and you basically be a, a man with breasts. <laughs> wow. It's like a... Okay. It's, it's, it's Did a, you a, ever... Breast. Did you ever stop taking hormones or are you still taking them to the? Um, as of now, it's yeah. not something that I have to do every week. I don't take them every week now. Um, I do still take them, but it's not as frequently as I used to when I was younger. Because okay. I, I feel like I have developed into the femininity that I have, you know, grown to be. I don't think it's any more feminine than I can go to be honest, but, um, yeah, I still take it here and there. I did take a break from it because I was tired of shooting myself in the butt cheek with a shot. So it was just like, all right, I'm not where I want to be. Like, that's how I kind of looked at it. 
I'm not where I want to be now. So it's like, do I really have to take it like that? They say you're supposed to continue to take your hormone therapy your whole entire life. But um, me, I feel like I did overload. Like I was, I think at one point I was actually um, overdosing with hormones because I remember when I had to, when I started going to the clinic, the health clinic, the, you know, the nurse and whoever I was seeing, I think she said that she's like, my hormone level was so high, the estrogen. She was like, you got to kind of stop taking that as much because I was taking pills too. I found pills to take and the shot. So I was. So, so are, the pill, are the pills, are the pills, are they the, hormones as well? Mm -hmm. The pills, they're called, I'm going to tell you the name of it. So the hormone shot, they're called Extradal or Spiralactone. Spiralactone are the pills, which are testosterone blockers. And mm -hmm. they have another, um, another, um, name that some people use. I can't think of the name of it. It was estradiol and um and another liquid form name. But I was taking um both. So with the testosterone blocker, they kind of like stopped a lot of things. Like, you know, as a male, you know, you know how you might get a little horny or whatever and stuff like that. That stuff, it stops all of that. It, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean you don't get horny anymore? Well, when I was taking those spiralactones, uh -huh. it kind of breaks down your, you know, your level of... Urge, whatever. Yeah, it, okay. it breaks down your testosterone level. So okay. I remember when I was taking them really strong, like, I was so... I'm like, okay, it's like, it's, it's dead weight. <laughs> it's like, you know, it was like I wasn't horny, but I was doing it because I wanted to keep feminine. And then I eventually stopped taking those pills because I was you, like, you know, uh -huh. I got to ask you, even from the shots or, or, or even the pills, what, what are some of the side effects? I would say some of the side effects, if you, you know, take too much of it, it can damage your liver. That's what I was told. If you do too much. You have to space it out, you know, with the pills, it works slower with the shots. It's faster because it's, it's a liquid form going straight into your bloodstream. Uh -huh. So that's why I was always doing the shots. But when I couldn't get shots, like if I couldn't go up north to get my shots. I would just simply take like four or five pills a day to try to equal up to it. Every day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so is, is, are these things that you're getting off the black market, or is this at this point does does insurance pay for this? Yeah, I was still paying for it from like my older trans moms. I used to call them my trans moms, so I would get them for that. They would sell me the pills and all that. So I mean, one time I may gave her a hundred dollars, and she gave me like fifty pills, two shots, you know. So I won't have to come back next week. It can hold me, you know. I okay, so in general, in general, does insurance pay for? Yeah, now it does. Needs? It now, does now. Yeah, yeah if okay. you have insurance, it'll pay for your hormone therapy. You just, you just have, you may have to just maybe pay like twenty bucks or something. But hormones, like for the shots by itself, is like a hundred dollars a bottle. You know. So okay, so so I'm gonna ask you a question, um, and I don't even know how to ask this. Um, but feel free if, if you're uncomfortable as answering. But uh, are you fully transitioned? I am pre-op. Okay. Pre-op means no, means before surgery. Okay. So I, I am not post-op. Is there, is there a reason? Because well, you seem very comfortable. There's a few reasons. There's a few reasons why I am still pre-op. I'm still pre-op because I actually... I'm not really sure if I want to go all the way through yet because it's just been a lot of stuff that I seen and heard from people that are post. So I kind of want to give it a little more time and I'm very comfortable with who I am. So so many people know that I'm trans right now. So it's like, um, why not? Why do I have to get it now? You know, most people, most trans women that get the whole surgery 
are those that aren't really open. They don't really want their business out. So they want to become that woman, live that life as a woman. And it's whoever knows is probably who they are dealing with, at, you know, personally. But other than that, I know a few trans women that are post op that work in strip clubs and you wouldn't even know. OK, so stop. Stop there, because that was another place I, I needed to go in this conversation. Mm-hmm. When you're post op. How. Legit. Uh, is the anatomy. Would, would, would anybody be able to tell? I would say the from the naked eye, from a man naked eye, no. You wouldn't, because they do so good with it now. I think the only way that someone would know what it is, if it's actually a female herself, like a female looking at it, a female probably might could tell that something is different. Have, have you but, ever personally seen someone mm-hmm, who posts up? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. It looks very, very identical, uh, almost. Only thing that I can say that I noticed is that it's, um, it's kind of like, mm, I kind of say, it's kind of like small. It looks kind of small and it looks like, kind of like a teenage type of vagina. But I can say that, um, from my other friends, hers, it it didn't look like it was very deep or or you know, it you know, it looked like she had to because you have to dilate to keep it open, to keep it depth the depth of it. So they have to dilate and then sometimes you only have six inches of dilation. So that is another thing. If you do your dilation really good, then I think that determines on how deep you're gonna be. But my friend said that dilation hurts really bad. Okay, like this, is your, this is a friend who's post op. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and your friend who, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, because basically when you're dilating, it's like you're keeping the hole open. Because if you, right when you get the sex change, basically if you don't dilate, it'll close up. Because it's an open wound. You get it? Yes. Got it. Got it. Um, After post, if you will, um, does it behave like a vagina in the sense that these women can have an intimate relationship with their partner? Mm -hmm. I think that one thing that my friend let me know, she says she still has to probably use Uh lube. She has to use lube for it. Um, but other than that, you know, anybody could use lube, you know, some girls' vaginas are dry. <laughs> so it's like, to be honest, I don't think you would be able to tell unless you just want to really um, examine and go in and see what's going on. But I think most of foremost, no, you can't really tell the difference, especially nowadays. Okay. Within that community, does someone who has gone through with the operation, do they look down or or look look any less? Yes, I will agree to say that. I have I have to say sometimes yes. Um, there has been people that I know that have been pre and I've hung with them, and they become post and they think they are queen of Egypt, like way better than me, way better than any girl that's. Still pre oh yeah, they be on top of the world. And it's it's pretty funny because it's like I because sometimes I like to be smart and I'll be like, girl, you're still a transsexual, but just a transsexual with a vagina. I want sometimes when I feel like you're trying to you're trying to get on my, you know, like I'm not all that no more because you have a sex change. No, but in my opinion, I probably would have been the same way too. I ain't even gonna lie. I probably would be like, I'm that <laughs> bitch. I got a sex change. Fuck all you bitches. Kiss my feet. I can walk out, pull my pants down. Can you? <laughs> so nah. I kind of get it. I get it. But yeah, it definitely makes you feel more superior than a trans girl like myself who's pre-op. They definitely feel more superior than the pre-op girls. You, you said something that was... Uh 
intriguing. Um, you you said trans women who go through the operation, they have the surgery. It's usually because they're hiding the fact or they don't want the world to know that they once transitioned. That That's, I would never look at it that way. Yeah. I, you know, from being on my side, I would think that, you know, you, you're so bold with it and you don't care who knows. I'm going all the way. There's no turning back for me. I'm proud. I had no idea that the thought process is I want to keep this low. And if I can get this surgery, no one will ever know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just it's different, different groups of people. Why they get it? The group, there's a group A. The ones that don't want to be known. They don't want no one to know that they're transgender. Then you have the girls that are out, like myself, that just want to get it because they don't want to have a penis anymore. They want to look at themselves and see a vagina. They don't want to be a girl with a penis. Then you have the ones that, you know, are kind of halfway in, back and forth. Because I know a few girls, too, that are in the community, but then they still live their life as a, a straight woman. So they do it, like, sometimes. Like, they may come in the community, hang out at Gay Pride, say, I'm a known, I'm, I'm a proud trans transgender woman, and they have a vagina. And then they go back to their normal life, which is the heterosexual life, because they have a vagina, which they can do that. So it's both. They can do both. They can back them in and then they can back out. So it's like then you have the girls like me that are known on television and known on shows. And it's like at this point, I don't have to get it because people so many people know that I'm trans already. So if anything, it would just be my own decision that I would say, OK, guys. I'm going to get a sex change. Boom. And then that's when I get some of my guy friends that I deal with on a sexual tip. Like, tell me, you don't need to do that. If you do that, I ain't fucking with you no more. Like, stuff like that. <laughs> like, I like you just the way you are. You're going to be an ordinary girl after this. You're not the best of both worlds anymore. I get so many of people that, that I've actually said that I was going to do it. And they'll be like, you need to stay unique. They'll be like, you're not going to be unique anymore. That's what sets you aside from everybody. You're, you know, you're pretty girl with a penis. That's you. Okay. So, so, so I got to ask, let me jump in right there before, before <laughs> I lose my train of thought. Mm -hmm. You clearly, you look like a woman. There's no doubt you're an attractive woman. You act like a woman. Does it not mess with your own mind and your own psyche when you get undressed and <laughs> everything is about you is a woman and you still have a penis? Yeah, I can. I will admit and say that I am kind of like, I'm very, I will admit, I'm not. It is something that is kind of like, uh, like, I get a little ashamed. I ain't even gonna lie. I be like, "Us, I don't want people seeing that," you know. So yeah, I do. It'd be like, it'd be like weird. It is kind of weird for my own stuff because I'd be like, "Damn, I got these luscious breasts, these beautiful feminine face, soft skin, big juicy booty, and then you have that." <laughs> <laughs> so it's really kind of like, yeah, it's it's a very awkward for me at times and I feel weird and that's why honestly when I am sexually with guys I always hide myself and then I have a lot of dudes to be like stop you ain't got to do all that you, you uh, hold, hold on hold on stop stop there what do you mean you hide yourself be specific I just I I, I hide I stay tough most of the time when I'm with a man and okay I'm so so I gotta ask you this and you're no longer on the pills you spoke about earlier which mm -hmm. one of the side effects is uh for lack of a better way to put it, you weren't able to get erect. The sexual, yeah, the sexual Correct. pleasure. Yeah. Today, are you able to get erect d d during intercourse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to feel my feeling now. But, you know, when I'm when I'm usually having intercourse with a man, I'm usually in doggy style position or, you know, that's the favorite position with me. But I, you know, tend to just kind of, get off when I'm giving them head. So then when that time to do intercourse, then it's like I could still 
kind of cover myself and be the woman that I feel that I am. I you know, it, it makes me feel more feminine. But I mean, I have a lot of guys that I've dealt with in the past that just tell me to be free and comfortable. And I like that. When I do have guys that come along like that, that's cool with me. If you cool with it, then I'm cool with it. I'm going to let myself be free. But yeah, I do. I do have that shaming moment. Like, you know, I don't be wanting that. I feel like I don't want the world to see that. I don't want the world to see that. So no, you know, and I do my little OnlyFans stuff. And that's not something that I show, you know. I might show some twerking and all of that, but you're not finna, no. Mm -mm. I'm not finna be, <laughs> I'm not finna be going, look at this, guys. No. Mm -mm. No. No, 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 no. I'm a little bit too feminine for that. I'm not, that, but there's a lot of girls you can go find and see that just as pretty as me, if not even prettier, because there's a lot of pretty trans girls out here that ain't afraid to show their peace in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would think, um, you know, if, if you get to the point where you're intimate with a guy and he knows who you are, mm -hmm. that has to be expected, especially yeah. if he knows your pre-op. Right. But even back in the day when I wasn't open, I was doing, I was, I've talked about this before and I ain't proud of that, but I used to have sex with guys and you would trick them. I would tell them I was on my, you know, period. And they would just, you know, have, you know, anal sex with me and they didn't know a thing still. How, how is that even possible? It's how, possible. How, how, really? It's possible when you, especially when you're not that big either. So it's like easy to hide. And then if you're doggy styling someone, you're not going to see that unless or feel it unless you try to reach around and grab it. But I would tell them, you know, I'm on my period. So you got to be gentle. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't do that anymore. So that the, the, the world, the world itself has changed in the mm -hmm. last um few years and it, and it is more inclusive it is more accepting do you mm -hmm. find today i mean you are loud and proud with it uh you're very open and very comfortable in your own skin but i think you know, we also live in a woke society where people are just more accepting of do you do, do you find that more men uh, are approaching you, more men are saying, I don't care, I'm into you. It doesn't matter, you know, the fact yeah. that you were born a male. Now in this day, yes, more men are very um, attracted to me and are open with me being who I am versus long time ago, like 2013, 2012, around that era. Now it's like, even if it's just about sex, yes, guys are are willing to get with me. And now I want I don't know more so about relationship. Now that's a little hard to find right now. But me just getting with a guy on a sexual tip, that's easy. That's and, 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 and they know mm -hmm. who they're dealing with. They know yeah. I am with Sydney Starr. A known trans woman. <laughs> yeah. That's like a blink of an eye I can get. So what, what do you what do you think the, the the attraction from the men are? Is it just because they see a beautiful woman? Is it because you you're Sydney Star or do, do I they just a lot. I think it's a whole a lot of those. I think it's a I think it's um intriguing. They're intrigued. There's a lot of dudes that hit me up and be like, yo, I've been watching you on TV for a while. Like I'm I just want to see what that mouse do. Like they want to just, you know, they want to just get a feel of the head, how the head is for me. Or then you have the ones that are into trans girls, but they see me and they, you know, they it's guys that have told me they didn't saw me while they was in jail. They watched me on TV while they were in jail. I've had so many of that. I've had so many guys tell me they watched me on Love and Hip Hop in jail. And they're like, damn, that's a trans. They, I remember one guy, he was like, I kept saying to myself, damn, that's a trans? He said he kept saying that because I was very vocal about being trans when I was on Love and Hip Hop 
Um, and there are some guys that hit me up and was like, I just was like, they would say, when I get out of jail, I'm going to find you. I'm going to hit you up and find you. And there's been dudes that hit me up while they're still in jail on the DMs. Wow. So now they have phones in jails and these guys are hitting me up and telling me how, you know, beautiful I am, how they wish that I was their girl. And it's crazy. I get it all. So I think it's a little bit of everything. They want to get with me because they see the, the character. Then it's sons that just want to get with me because that's what they into. They into, you know, attractive trans women. And then there's some guys that just hit me up because they just don't fucking know. They just stumbled mm-hmm. across my page and they saw a cute girl. They see that I was on some television shows and then they hit me up and then they don't know. They don't do their research. They don't be it's like, oh shit, I didn't know you was trans. Like, yeah. I so when sure they I find know. out, when they find out what percentage of men actually continue to I pursue still you? get rejected. I still get rejected. I, I, I get that still. Like, they'll be like, damn, I didn't know. They'll just be like on some cool shit. They'll be like, yo, no offense. You fooled me. I didn't know. But you got to, you know, you got to look at it like I've been fooled myself too with people. So I have to put myself in their shoes. So they'll just be like, yo, it's not my thing. You're, you know, you are very attractive, but that's just not my thing. And you know, it have been times when guys have done that to me, turn me down, and then they don't hit me back months later, like, what's up? And I'm like, I thought you said you wasn't interested. And they don't came around. That's happened to me a lot too. So it's like and, and you've <laughs> actually you've actually been intimate with these men. Yes, some 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 of these guys I have. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So I do I do fuck my fans. Okay, what? What did you just say? <laughs> I fucked my fans. Yeah, I fucked a few of my fans before. <laughs> yep. And Yo, some, okay, of them, so those... some, of them, some of them have have offered me some money that I can't couldn't refuse either. So that's why I'm like, okay, let's make it happen. You know. All right, but... So I got to ask you, mm-hmm. men, just men in general. Um. Typically, men will have a higher sex drive and they'll be more promiscuous than women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you're born a man. And although you have transitioned. Correction. I wasn't born a man. I was born. I like to say <laughs> I was born a girl with a penis because no one's born a man. No one's born a woman. We actually all started off as girls. Did you know that? uh, Are you talking about with the XY chromosomes? Well, in general, as a fetus, we were when we were fetuses, and that is true. Yep, that is true. We all started off as females. That is true. I never, and, and I never actually ever, ever let myself become the man that most people thought that I was going to be. So I wasn't born a man. <laughs> we don't say that. Okay, so thanks for the that. correction. So you could say, maybe it's another way you could say it. You were born, um, I guess you, you could say you, male. I don't know. How, how about this? Male. You were born with a penis. Can, can, born can with a penis, yes. Yeah. You Do, do you feel as though having a penis, you have uh, uh, an extremely high sex drive and and are a bit more promiscuous than uh, someone who might have been born with a vagina? Bro, cis women, cisgender, that's what you call it, cisgender, yeah. Um, Cisgender. Okay, so so you're educating me across the board, cisgender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I feel that way. I, um, but when I'm strong, when I'm strong on my hormones, I don't really have that. But when I kind of take a little break, yeah, I get, I'm on my, I'm on my, I'm on my, like how you said, my man shit, you know, <laughs> I'm on, I'm on, I'm on demon time. I'm ready to get fucked <laughs> <dick> every day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I would say, yep. 
you know, I looked like that, that, that female out of appearance, but I got that feeling of a man. I'm ready to get fucked, ready to suck some dick, all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I get those wow. moments. I definitely get those moments. So luckily I can't say this about myself. I'm a very promiscuous girl. I will admit that. I love sex. I'm an info. I like, I love to watch porn every day. But I will say this about myself. I am very, very, very safe. I am the number one girl that will bring a condom out in the quickness because there are so many cases in my community of people having HIV. And I said to myself, I would never let myself become that statistic. Statistic. Well, I can never statistic. pronounce that word. Yeah, Stop I said to myself, statistic. I will never let myself do that. And I can honestly say, and I hate to brag about things like this because it's not anything wrong with anyone who is HIV positive. But I like to brag and say that I am so happy that I am negative still to this day because I have so many friends that are HIV positive. And it's because they had the little moments being horny, they just didn't grab a condom. You got to make decisions each person. If that person ain't making the right decision, you need to make the decision to say, hold on, we need to get a condom. But I can say this. I have, I'm not perfect, but I have maybe had raw sex maybe two to three times in my whole life. So, and that was when I was dating someone in a relationship. Two of those people were, well, three of them was somebody I was dating and I have their name tattooed on me. I have two dudes' names tattooed on me. So I knew when I wanted to do it, which I thought it's safe that we can do this because we're together. But other than that, if I'm on my promiscuous shit, my whole shit, nah, baby, I'm not sucking your dick raw. I got this condom. It's a bare skin. Let me pull it out. You still gonna get the good skin. I ain't never got my dick sucked with a condom. Well, you're gonna get your dick sucked condom with a dick. Today you are. And I can guarantee you, these same guys that I done did that with are so shocked that I made them nut with the condom on. Because they like, yo, damn, I didn't even think I could nut with the condom on. Well, now you know. So maybe you can go out and be a little more safer. We can still be freaks and all of that, but I'm gonna be a freak with protection on my side and i've had guys turn me down because i wanted to use a condom now that that right there that really sends me because i didn't have that happen when a dude was like i ain't trying to get my dick stuck raw i mean he's like i ain't trying to get my dick stuck with a condom and i'm like well i guess we ain't linking up then because i don't know what the hell you got that's right you know? that's right so, I, people are like you can't get nothing from the mouth well yeah it's probably a hard percentage to doing it from oral and getting something but there's still ways you can catch something from orally trust you typically especially within uh the gay community before people come out they are um ashamed confused and, and at least they give a try to live in a, a quote unquote normal lifestyle you're talking about the down low men I'm talking about before people come out. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, before you came out, had you ever been with a woman? Um, when I was in grammar school, I had girlfriends like that. But actually, I've never actually had intercourse with a girl before. Never. Got you. Never have. And I don't really have an urge to do it or ever plan on doing it. I've had many women coming at me, though. It's so many girls that actually want to have sex with me. <laughs> oh, you, you're talking about currently? Yes, currently. I've had girls hit me up. Do, no, hold on, hold on. Do they know who you yeah, are? They know I'm trans. They know I'm trans. They know what I have. And they want to have sex with me. Yes. How, how does that conversation even come up? Um, and they'll hit me up. They'll be like, are you into girls by any chance? <laughs> because there are trans women that fuck girls. There are a lot of them out there. 
but I'm not one of them. <laughs> okay, you I just said, educated you just educated me again. I had no I, I thought that that goes completely against. No, it's speaking a, the transition. It's, it's a lot of beautiful trans women that have sex with girls. Yeah. But the only thing I can say that I ever did with a girl was let a girl fuck me with a dildo for my OnlyFans. <laughs> That's about it. But me fucking them, no. But I have very, very, I've had some female groupies hit me up in my DM on Instagram and Twitter. They like, yo, I want you so bad. Like, I would have sex with you. You're so beautiful. I want to be with a pretty trans, but they always tell me they always had a fantasy to have a sex with a, a, a cute trans girl. And and hold you to this. It's been times where I've had couples hit me up too. You've actually yeah. had couples. Yes. A meaning meaning of, heterosexual couples? Heterosexual couples, yeah. Yep. That they want to have a threesome with a with a trans girl. And I will admit that I did do that one time. But I don't think I fulfilled their fantasy because I was only into the guy. <laughs> the girl was just sitting there watching, really, and she played with my breasts and licked my nipples and all that. And But I think she got a kick out of seeing her man fuck me. I think it turned her on. If you don't so, mind me asking, what were, were, were they white? Were they black? They were black. They were black. Black young couple, very attractive. The girl was very pretty. The dude was pretty. He was, no, very handsome, not pretty. He was very sexy. I met them in a club when I was out in the club and they had recognized me. This was around kind of like the 2011, 2012 time around when I kind of first started coming out. I was more so internet famous, world star hip hop. I was on that a lot, media takeout. These, you know, people recognized me. They're like, you're Sydney Star. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, you're the one that has all that drama going on with Chingy and all that. I'm like, yeah, that's me. So then the girl comes over to me, whispers in my ear and like um, tells me, oh, me and my guy, we want to have you for the night. And I was like, what? I looked at her. I'm like, y'all, you joking, right? <laughs> she like, no, we will take you home. We'll make sure you're good. We'll make sure you get dropped off. <laughs> but we want to fuck you tonight. And I was- It was the girl who propositioned you? The girl you? who approached me and talked, yeah. The dude didn't talk, say nothing. I'm like, you sure your dude said this? She's like, I guarantee you he said that he wants us to have you for some fun tonight. So I, I was already in the drink three. So I said, let me have a few more drinks and then I'm gonna let you know how I feel, what I'm gonna do. I ended up leaving with them. I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous. I was thinking to myself, are they about to kidnap me? Are they about to do something to me or what? But I was living life. I was young. I was a little bit younger then. I was living life. I said, fuck it. Let me, let me do this. Let me see what's to it. They had a nice little, um, you know, apartment. It was nice. I got there. All she wrote, it was history. I can write in a book. They were all over me. I felt like I was just a queen because he was up there. He had one titty. She had one. And <laughs> I was just like, wow, this is really happening. And um, it was something that I actually kind of recorded, too. Um, she recorded it off my phone. I still have a little bit of a video of this to this day on my old, old phone. So, Are you serious? Yeah, she was recording him fucking me on my phone. <laughs> yeah so it was definitely an experience so I did the couple things one time but I've had that happen to me lately guys they're hitting me up like me and my girl want to you know experience you we want to have a threesome with you but I, don't, I haven't done it I haven't done it now the two guys I've done though I do that often quite often two dudes okay, I'm do, cool do, with that do, do these and this is something this is something you and I spoke about prior um it's actually one of the first time i spoke to you you made the 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 comment that you don't feel as though men who have sex with transgender women are gay yeah i still i said what i said and i'm hold out 
I hold my truth to what I said with that. Yes, I think any man that is attracted to a trans woman is considered straight. I believe that if a person that is attracted to femininity, women, you know, there's nothing gay about that. There ain't nothing gay about it. In my opinion, if you if you're if you're bending me over and I'm sucking your penis, we're doing heterosexual activity, in my opinion. Okay, now, so if, you just said you, know, you just said that you had a threesome with two men. Mm-hmm. I've had threesomes with two guys before. Mm-hmm. Were those men, in your opinion, are they? Because there's still two men in the bedroom with each other. Are, are they? No, because it's like they? it's like running the train on a woman. That happens all the time, and those guys are still they consider themselves heterosexual. It could be three, four guys in a room with one girl, and they, you know, you know, you don't see the porns with the gang bang. It's just like that. <laughs> you know, I meant to. I meant to ask you that earlier. You mentioned you watch porn every day. I love porn. I love. I'm on Twitter all the time. Twitter is the new porn hub. Okay, I'm. I'm gonna get to that. What type of porn do you watch? Is is there is there trans porn out there? Straight, straight, straight porn. I love straight porn. I don't watch trans porn. That's not my thing. More power to it. But I will watch straight porn. That's my number one thing. And I love watching the men pleasure themselves. Jack off videos. Love those. <laughs> okay. And then, what is it yeah. about Twitter? What is it about Twitter these Twitter days? Twitter is the new porn hub. Twitter is what the is new that porn hub. It's literally porn on Twitter everywhere now. <laughs> yes. Believe it or not. It's all over Twitter now. I follow a lot of freak pages on Twitter. So every time I go on my Twitter, I see something sexual. So I have to make sure when I'm in public, I do not go on my Twitter. <laughs> That's what Twitter is. Okay. Place. Has it become that since Elon Musk is taking over? Um, or was it like that before? It was like that before that. It was like that before him. Huh. Mm-hmm. Now he was there. There was some word that he was about to try to start getting, getting rid of it. But I don't know. It's just it's everywhere. It's too much to even get rid of. So I would say you might not win that battle, sir. Just let it You're be. You're telling me it is that prevalent on Twitter right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. You don't even have to go to Pornhub anymore. You can just go to Twitter. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Are, are you familiar with the name? Christopher Beck, Chris Beck. Chris Beck? Um, Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't really know who that is. Okay, he was a Navy SEAL. He is a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. uh, About 10 years ago, he transitioned. Um, To a female? Excuse me? He transitioned to a girl? Yeah, he he, he was a male, a, a a Navy SEAL, and he transitioned to a female. Now he's detransitioning and he's oh, leading back. this campaign, essentially saying that America, it, it's almost like a, a mill, if you will. Um, soon as a kid says, hey, I'm a little confused, they, they have uh, doctors and psychiatrists and telling them, hey, you're transgender, go. And he said almost within a week, he had a conversation that he was confused and he was on hormones. What do you think about or do you know any um, transgenders who has either detransitioned or in or in the process? Of I knew of one. I knew of one a long time ago when I was younger. Um, I remember her name. Her name was T.S. Eve. Um, she was gorgeous and she took her breast implants out, all that and went back to it was weird looking though. Because she looked still real feminine. She's looked, even when she went to turn back to a guy, I still was like, I see a girl still. Like, it's weird. Like, I'd be like, why would you do that? I kind of looked down on her because I'm like, why would you do that? So, yeah, I knew of one, but I mean, it happens, I guess. People, I don't ever see myself doing that ever. But do, do you feel like America or or the society as a whole are pushing? 
um, teenagers into, I mean, because we, we're seeing teenagers younger and younger who are transitioning, uh, their parents are, are actually being applauded for being mm-hmm. understanding, you know, accepting. And, and you know, many times these, they're teenagers, mm-hmm. you know, who knows if they are, are going to feel like this two, three years from now, but they start a transition. Yeah, that's yeah, that could be a little tricky when you start that young. But I think, you know, usually, in my opinion, when it starts off that young, they know exactly that's what they want to be. But, you know, some people like Caitlyn Jenner that started at 70, 60 years old, that might be a little different, you know, because I don't know. He could very much say, I don't want to do this no more. But at this point, he's old. Enough, she's old enough to know, like, this is it. This is who I want to be. But come on, you waited this long to transition. So that should, you know, just, it's a little bit much. I think if a person on transition, they should start young. Let's look at somebody like Dwayne Wade's daughter, Zaya. Mm-hmm. She came out at 13 years old, and I believe she's in the process now. I believe she's 15 now, and she's in the process of transitioning. But, you know, even if she wanted to turn back, there's so many cameras and so much uh, of the spotlight that's on her at this point. How, how do how does a young person even turn back once they say this is who I am and what I want to do? And then everybody starts pushing them in that direction. Yeah, I do believe that that is. Uh, I have no fucking idea moment for me because I don't even know how that would even work when that happens because it's different for me. I didn't have all that. I did Correct. it all myself. You know what I mean? It's a little different for her because she's in the spotlight at that age. So it's like now she, and maybe in her mind, she has to keep doing it. You know? Correct. Even if she wanted to, she probably couldn't. And it's like she'll probably make a lot of she probably feels like she'll make a lot of people disappointed, you know, in my opinion. But I think it melts my heart that they are supporting her. I think it's amazing. Like, no, I, I think it's a beautiful thing that they're supporting her. I, I didn't do. have that support. I didn't have that type of support at that young. So it, it, it came for me when I when I got into my when I got out of high school when I became and starting into my twenties, you know, I had to wait a little bit. So I'm a bit jealous of her. I'm a bit jealous mm-hmm. that she has that, that I, I wish I could have had that, that young. But the thing is, I hope she don't have no thoughts to wanting to go turn back because it's like you here, girl, you got to keep this going or it's going to be a lie. It's going to probably be even more controversial, you know? So do, do you think do you think it should be an age limit put on this or, or or an age where you can actually start to transition no different than voting or um, going to war, getting a license? Do, do you think that you, maybe the government should step in and say, OK, you know what? If this is who you are at 13, you'll be this person at 18, but at mm-hmm. least you will be a little more mature and, and you'll know that this is something I absolutely want to go through with instead of making a decision when, you know, we probably wouldn't let most 13, 14, 15 years old, 15 year olds make life altering decisions. Uh, yeah. I don't think it should be an age limit. I think, you don't. Um, I think if this, if a person, if, if a child feels the way they are, you have to accept that at that moment, I don't think it should be a late age limit. No, I think, I think it is, we know when it's, you know, I think we know when it's the right age. Like, okay, this is okay. Maybe I would say the, I would say the, probably the youngest, probably I would say to take it there is at least eight, eight years old, nine years old, maybe 10. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's, I think that's the youngest you could do it. I think that's the youngest we could entertain it and accept it is at 10 years old. Because I think around that age, that's when 
people can, a child can really know in a way what they, their mind is in a way. I feel like, yeah, anybody under nine years old, you shouldn't even know what sex is or even liking what is. But I mean, nowadays, you never know. It's so much going on. There's kids see everything now. Kids see stuff they shouldn't see. So, but I still don't agree it should be an age limit. I think it's. I, like, I, I, I think it's, ten is young, though. I, I would say you have to be a teenager at, at least, least at the bare at least minimum. Twelve, thirteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and even that to me is young. But you know, mm-hmm. it, it, if you got your parents' consent, but I'm even worried about that. Like you know, we we have all made this. In your case, you knew exactly who you were at a very young. Age. I did it myself. I did. Nobody was helping me. Yeah, but but it, you knew who you were. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of people take sexuality out of it. They, they have no idea what I want to do with my life. They have no idea, you know, about most major life decisions. It's, you know, even as adults, they still are trying to figure it out, let alone being adolescents. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, 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 before I let you up out of here, I want to ask you, um, and there's only one name I'm going to mention only because he has been open about it. But you you're very promiscuous. You you have made that clear. You love sex and. Um, you you have no problem getting men. <clears throat> Not at all. Are there men in the public eye that DM you in in? I know you, well, I believe based on the photo shoot, you and Darius McCrary, who most people know as Eddie Winslow, um, had something going on. But are, are, are there other men in the public eye that you are even surprised that that hit you? Yeah. I'm not going to say no names because I don't, no, I don't want you to. No I don't drama, want you to. But yeah, yeah definitely. Really? Okay. Definitely. Are there are there men that you would have never thought? Yeah, that would never even entertain me. Yes. Yes to that question. So I honestly can say I um I I really um hold power in my opinion because I'm like, oh okay. But I always said to myself, if I wasn't trans, if I still was the way I looked right now, and I wasn't trans, and I just was a cisgender female, I'd probably be one of these high, quote-unquote, public eye guys' girlfriend. I definitely would be one of their girlfriends. Mm. Definitely. I would be in a, I would be in a Lexus Sky. I would be a Ari Fletcher or Jada, you know, those type of girls. I okay, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because because I have the look that they like. I have that look that they like, and I have a very good personality, so I, that would have matched it. And I guarantee you that I would have been one of these big name rappers, actors, whatever you want to call them. I'd have been, I'd have been out there. I'd have been one of these side girlfriends or the actual girlfriend publicly publicly and i'm just that girl i'm that girl i'm even that girl as a trans girl i'm that girl so imagine if i was this cisgender out doing the same thing that i've been doing in the industry i'd be so honestly i honestly believe i would be way bigger than what i am now why did, were you in in Darius? Were you actually a couple, or was was that just somebody that you talked to? Yeah, we're good friends. We're just a good, really good friends that are comfortable with each other. Okay, I won't dive deep, but but again, I mean, I thought that this was common knowledge only because you guys did a photo shoot together. So mm-hmm. you know, he's he very seems comfortable. comfortable in his own skin. Mm-hmm. He's very comfortable with who I am, vice versa. And if we did something or not, it's none of y'all goddamn business. You're right. So, so we'll leave it alone. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was. I thought it was common knowledge. Look, so, if, if you, I'm gonna leave it to the imagination. If y'all know, you know. You don't, you don't. But at this point, like I said, 
me and him, we are cool. We're open. You know, we, you see what you're seeing. So it's like, it's, it's, it's just whatever you think, you know, I don't, I'm going to make sure you're not going to hear nothing from my mouth. I'm pretty sure. Don't worry. We can, we can switch him. topics. Because I, <laughs> it's I, I, all right. Can... It's, it's okay. Look, I'm, I've talked about this publicly on the on the reel. When I was on the reel talking about this when before they got canceled. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's whatever people think because I mean I'm a bad bitch at the end of the day. Darius is a man, a straight man, and he said it himself that I am a beautiful person and he said, can't nobody lie and say that I'm not attractive. And I'm going to leave it at that. And I like the fact that he was able to say that publicly to Claudia Jordan on her show. Uh-huh. Yep. That yep. You can't lie. Sydney Starr is beautiful. Any I, don't think there's no, I don't think there would be no dispute there, Sydney, uh, from yeah. anybody. You know, heterosexual, yeah. male. Like, whether they, you they, like, they, yeah, whether you... Whether you know that I'm trans or not, I think I am a very attractive person. And I got I got myself to this point because I've taken care of myself to doing the things that I needed to do to be the woman that I am today. So, yeah, if Darius has a little thing for me, then it ain't no, it ain't no problem. It shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but, for, but for the record, he is not the only public figure that has slid no. into your DMs. No, he's not. Okay, so without saying names, have you actually been intimate with other public figures? Yeah, of course. Really? Plenty. Okay. Couple, couple of them. Okay. I'm going to take to the grave, you know? <laughs> you yeah. know, but that, that's, that's something that, for that reason alone, I, I would have to believe that, that you get the highest respect for them. Because we live in a society where everybody is blowing somebody up, irregardless. And I've grown. So the I've grown fact that you are, are like, I'm taking it to the grave, that's commendable in and of itself. I've grown too. I've matured so much since I came to the industry, like with that whole chingy thing. I don't Correct. want no more of that bullshit drama. So if I deal with somebody for real and do what we do what we do, I'm taking this to the grave. Ain't nobody's business. Unless we both agree to talk about it, then that's how you're going to know. But other than that, I ain't telling nobody business on who got with me or who hit me up because it's like, what's the point? What's the point of putting that out there? That's right. You know, that's right. Uh, Okay, switch topics with me for a second. Um, In the world of sports, Mm -hmm. there's a whole uproar right now. Um, transgender women, you know, they, they, they're competing against the sister gender. Is that what you call it? The cisgender? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, do, do, do you think that's fair? Um, so what are you asking? Like, is it in, fair in, in sports, in sports, mm-hmm. whether it's track and field, um, swimming. Are you saying, is it fair that a trans woman can compete in a woman's Yes. Woman's, um, I believe it's fair. Yeah, I, I believe it's fair. If she's on hormone therapy all the way and she even if she has a sex change, that makes it even better. But um, yeah, I think it's fair because we view ourselves as women. We don't want to compete. Um, we don't want to compete in no men's competition. So, yeah, it's fair. Unless, you know, they want to do something in the future where it's just transgender competition, then do that. But at this point, no, I feel like if I was a swimmer and I'm a professional swimmer, but I identify as female, I'm going to be wanting to compete against women, not men. So, yes, it's very fair. Nothing else to even talk about, really, as far as debating on that. It's fair, in my opinion. Other people, it might not be fair, but in my opinion, it's fair. I'm not about to compete compete against a whole group of full-blown men when I am looking like this. No. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, and right now there are a lot of women who are saying that it's unfair. Uh, you know, that's, they, that's, they, that's, you mm. know, we we understand how you see yourself, but but it's it you have an unfair advantage. So yeah, this that's, is that's one of those debates that I'm sure are going to be you know talked about for many years to come. Yeah, I don't think it'll ever be in agreement with it, but. Yeah, but but nowadays we we have we have we're able like to change our birth certificates to female, all that. So things is changing. The times is changing. So it's gonna be fair whether you like it or not. Because I feel like then you're gonna have a whole nother other issue if you won't let this girl compete because she's trans. And they don't want that issue with the LGBTQ community. It's just, you know, who wants to deal with all of that? Let the girl compete and 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 end the story. Like leave it alone. Cause you're gonna open a, a can of whoop ass and a can of worms you don't want to, you know, open. You know how the community is. So, so my I got to ask you. My community gets crazy when they want to fight for something. The, you just mentioned the LGBTQ community, and, mm-hmm. and you are absolutely right. They, they, they get it in. <laughs> um, it's it's just as as bad as animal abuse. If you yes, abuse, yes. you abuse the animal, you're gonna get them people with them animal rights coming at you. It's the same as the whole. LGBT rights is going to be the exact same energy. No, you're absolutely right. And we saw it firsthand with Dave Chappelle. They went crazy. His um, stand-up show on Netflix, The Closer, I I personally didn't look at it as transphobic, but I'm not trans. Mm-hmm. Did, did you get to see this special? And if you did, did you feel I didn't get to see it, it was offensive? But I, I didn't get to see it, but I heard about it. But I, from what I heard, I, they said he was friends with this person. They were friends. And Correct. I just kind of heard that. But I didn't find anything wrong with what I heard so far. But I'm going to have to check it out. But I don't think it was something that serious from what I heard that they made it out to be. No, I think it confused a lot of people within the heterosexual world because it, it, it sounded like he was giving it up to the community, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But I, you know, I'm I'm not transgender and I don't walk in their shoes. So for me, I was I was a little confused, but I was just wondering: Did you feel offended in any way, or did you feel like he crossed the line? Because truth be told. It, it didn't come that it didn't come off that way from me sitting in the crowd listening to him, you know, tell his jokes. Of course, Dave is Dave and he 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 spits some hard truths, but mm-hmm. it, it didn't sound offensive. Yeah, I didn't get anything offended from it because I didn't really see it. I might have to sit down and check it out. But I from what I heard, I, I didn't hear nothing that was like, oh, my God, why did he say that? Like. I just heard that he was friends with this person and um, they committed, did they commit suicide or something like that? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. His friend, his so friend committed suicide. That's all I heard. So I don't really, I didn't get anything bad from it, but I'm going to check it out. Well, you know, <laughs> Sydney, it's been my pleasure sitting and talking with you. You have educated me and I can't wait to put this out. Um, I'm sure it's going to be so many people who, Number one, see you in a different light. Um, but number two, you've opened all of our eyes to what it's like to to be a transgender woman. Like so, mm-hmm. so thank you so much for you know, number I, I you know, you you were very outspoken. You didn't dodge one question and, and you went into great depth with, with everything that I asked. So thank you so much for your time. No problem. Yeah, I enjoy talking with you and good luck on everything in the future and yeah this one's for the history books all right girl thank you again and um you know let's do it again soon okay thank you what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.